I'm joined today with Conservative Party leader Andrew Scheer. So, leader, last night you were in Winnipeg and you gave a very, very good town hall meeting. And one of the okay. questions that came up was related to the UN Global Compact on Migration. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something virtually everybody who watches this channel has asked me about. Yesterday, you said that you would have more to say about the UN Global Compact for Migration, even though we've been raising this for some period of time now. What is that? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yes, Michelle, and I know that you've been working on this a lot, so thank you for all the great work you've been doing as our Shadow Minister for uh, Immigration. Thanks. It came up last night in our town hall in Winnipeg. It was a wonderful town hall. We had uh, a few hundred people there, lots of different questions, and there were a few very passionate questions about where the Conservative Party stood on the UN Global uh, Compact on Migration. Uh, now, I had pointed out that we had already stated our position, but I recognized that as Canada gets closer and closer to signing it, mm. uh, that we need to really do everything we can to, to make sure that Canadians know what is about to, to happen. So today, just moments ago, I made the very f uh, I made the definitive announcement. Uh, even you know, Michelle had, had indicated this prior, but I announced not only that we w would be opposing signing the UN Compact on Migration, but that a Conservative government in 2019 will withdraw Canada from the compact. Uh, I believe that this uh, compact is um, uh, damages Canada's sovereignty. It, it, it lets a foreign entity have undue influence in our own management of our immigration system. And I gotta tell you, Michelle, I just have no confidence in Justin Trudeau's ability to nope. manage these types of issues. <laughs> uh, he's literally done nothing to solve the problem at the border. We're still uh, dealing with the exact same situation as we were, were almost two years ago. Uh, and I don't believe that uh, a foreign entity should have that kind of influence on our own domestic system. Now, something that you just announced in a press conference, I think a lot of Canadians have been asking for. Uh, I, I was really excited to hear this. You're going to take some concrete action in Parliament tomorrow with regard to the UN Global Compact Migration. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And then how can people help us with this? Okay, so uh, very quietly, this government has been moving towards signing this. And there, there never actually mm -hmm. has been a motion in the House of Commons. We've never had a vote on it. We've never had a, a bill that would be studied at committee where parliamentarians can really understand what That's the right. consequences are. Uh, and I, I, I don't believe Canadians have enough information to, to, to even make up their mind, even on either side of the issue. So what I'll be calling on tomorrow is a, a formal motion, I'll be proposing a formal motion in the House of Commons, demanding that the government stop working on this issue and announce that it will not sign on. Uh, we'll see now. Now members of parliament, uh, individual members vote. of parliament, will have an opportunity to support our motion. Uh, so I know you've been very vocal on this. I hope that people watching now will will share this video, will, will share this information with their friends and family. And if you live in a riding where there's a liberal or an NDP member of parliament, let them know what you think. They'll have an opportunity tomorrow to support our conservative motion. And to be clear, what we're doing tomorrow, uh, Andrew, our leader of our party, is going to introduce a motion in the House of Commons to stop Canada from signing on to the UN Global Compact for Migration. You know, something that you said to me earlier today really resonated with me, and that was, uh, you know, that, that Canada really has to rethink some of the principles that it uses on immigration policy because Justin Trudeau has taken us so far mm -hmm. away from that orderly system of lawful migration that we used to see under a former conservative government. Now this is something that I know you feel really passionately about. Mm -hmm. What are some of the principles you would use as Prime Minister to manage Canada's immigration system? Well, first and foremost, uh, I think it has to be built on a few fundamental principles. Number one is when it comes to immigration, uh, Canada needs to have targets based on our needs. We need to put our, our what Canada needs at the forefront of all the decision making. So we want to go and get the world's best and brightest and, and fill the economic gaps that are in our own country. We also need to take a look at our demographic situation and say, okay, for population growth, which is linked to economic growth, we need to welcome X number of people. It should be based on that fact, not not some kind of a, um, an auction where one party tries to outbid the other on in terms of number, but based on the needs of, of our country. Um, and then we can look at what Canada's obligations are to help the world's most truly vulnerable. And um, we, 
we know that with this Liberal government, we have a situation where people are coming across the border in a, in a way that is completely uncontrolled, you know, coming in from upstate New York. And now resources in the Immigration Department and Refugee Department are being strained because we're, they're processing people who are coming from upstate New York. And I believe that if we're going to welcome refugees and those seeking asylum, it should be from places where they're actually uh, fleeing from. There's actually civil I war know. or conflict, not Schenectady or, <laughs> I mean, like, or it's, Utica. It's, it's, it's so ridiculous. You kind of have to look at it. like It's not something to laugh about, but it's just, it's so ridiculous. $1.1 billion is how much Justin Trudeau has spent on people who have reached the safety of upstate New York. Yet, you just took a question from a reporter on the fact that genocide victims aren't being given access yeah. into our country. So yeah. I think it's just, it's tough. Now, something just with regard to, uh, you know, setting how, or selecting how people come into the country. Something you've said in the House of Commons before is that we shouldn't be placing priority on people who are coming in through the back door, who are breaking the rules, who are entering illegally, that we should be first ensuring that people who are playing by the rules have access to this country. You know, I, you and I both travel around the country a lot. We meet with a lot of people. And something that really, I think, is resonating with new Canadian communities is this principle oh, because they, they've 100%. come, like, I mean, how many of you, many of you that watch this feed, you have come to Canada very recently, you're a new Canadian, but you came here by playing by the rules. And I think that it's new Canadians that are most frustrated by watching what's happening at Roxham Road. You're absolutely right. Because new Canadians have, uh, who have come through the system uh, uh, through normal channels, they see how frustrating it is to have to wait. And I've met people all over the country who are waiting to be reunited with a loved one or who are sponsoring uh, their relative who has a special skill, who has a credential in a certain area, and there's a job waiting for them, and they get told, oh, it'll be another six months, another eight months, sometimes years and years. That's frustrating when they see people buying a one-way plane ticket to JFK Airport in the United States, getting on a bus, and then just crossing over illegally into Canada. That, that's something that frustrates them because they know the, the hardship that they went through because they did what we asked them to do. They followed the rules. My mother-in-law does work with an organization in Regina called the Open Door Society, mm. and they welcome refugees and help them get integrated into the community. Practical things like how to get your driver's license, how to, sure. you know, uh, how, what to, where to go to get certain services and, and, and that type of thing. And she's met people who spent seven, eight, nine years I in a know. refugee camp. And, 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 and they come to Canada and they're so thrilled that they're here and we welcome them and they're proud to be here and, and excited to be here. And they start taking uh, English or French language training and they, and they try to upgrade skills to get jobs. And then they say, well, wait a minute, why did I wait seven years waiting my turn if I could have just I know. shown up at the border and jumped, jumped the line? That's where the real- It's creating a pull is. into our system through the wrong way. And that's why outside of the cost, which is crazy, outside of, you know any of that sort of thing it's unfair it's disorderly and we have a prime minister who's been promoting that now just for people who are joining and I get this asked over and over again to be perfectly clear Andrew do you support the UN Global Compact on Migration today I announced that we were we are opposing Canada signing on to this deal I am calling on Justin Trudeau to walk away from this deal not to sign on to it and I also announced that if he does sign on to it and we said a few minutes ago, he's, he's going down this road without any debate in the House of Commons, without any study, without any ability for Canadians to, to really be informed as to what the consequences of this uh, uh, compact are. So I announced today, in addition to the fact that we are calling on the government to oppose it, as Prime Minister in 2019, I will withdraw Canada from this compact. I will ensure that Canada has its sovereignty protected for our own domestic policy, that we, as Canadians, as the government of Canada, serving the people of Canada, have the final say on what type of immigration system we're going to have to protect this integrity of our border, to make sure that we can welcome those who are truly fleeing persecution. You and I have often said, it, it makes sense that people want to come to Canada. My ancestors came to Canada. So did mine. Uh, we, people come from all over the world. They leave a place that isn't offering them uh, opportunities. They're leaving a place that in some cases uh, can be dangerous or they don't want to raise their children. And they come to Canada because of the freedoms that we enjoy, because of the prosperity that is available to people who are willing to work for it. Uh, so that makes perfect sense, but Canada as a country has to be able to manage 
that influx with to, to, to manage those people coming in an orderly way that prioritizes what our country needs first and then uh, to help those fleeing real danger who are legitimately uh, having to, 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 to flee for their lives. So that's the, the crux of our announcement. I should say, one thing that bears repeating is that this is not a new position for us. Uh, this is something that our uh, party has already articulated. It's been some time. Uh, Michelle, at committee, you were working on this. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought this up. You indicated that this is where the Conservative Party of Canada was going. We did this today because there's been more and more attention of it, and I, and I wanted to highlight the position that we've already taken uh, for some weeks. And I think, you know what, we, uh, to be honest with you, there's been so much pushback from so many Canadians. I think, you know, it's reasonable that the government should have changed their position and it's very clear that they haven't they're not willing to budge on this and i'm really proud that you're going to be introducing this motion in the house of commons tomorrow so we need this guy to be prime minister of this country you know i, I sit here i've watched this week i watched you know justin trudeau completely denigrate the energy sector we watch job losses we watch our immigration system being eroded and day after day after day i get to work with this man who is going to make a great prime minister for this country. So how you can help us fight Justin Trudeau, share these videos, get out, help support conservative candidates. We just had a big by-election win yes. last night. Congratulations. Yes. The momentum is on our side and it's because of you. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for everything that you do. And together we're working to build a better Canada. Working hard for you in Ottawa. We'll get back into the House of Commons and get at it. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, have everyone. Have a great day.